the Stuart Models beam engine rebuild. This is part 22. Finishing the piston and rod. The piston blank is ready to go. It's time to thread the rod. Here is attempt number one. With a piece of 3 16 of an inch diameter stainless steel in the chuck and some tapping compound, I attempt to thread the end. And it threads okay, but there is one minor problem. The piston rod was rotating in the chuck. I tried to cut this in one pass. I really need to open the die up slightly, or maybe reduce the diameter of the 3 16 shaft by a few thou before cutting the thread. Although you can't see it, there are some really nice rings around the piston rod, which will be okay, but they'll look unsightly. I'm trying to simulate problems that beginners have when they're threading things in the lathe. The only thing to do if you get rings around the work by it spinning in the chuck is to start again. Only this time I'm taking a very small amount off the diameter. Only a couple of thou, but it will make a difference. Alternatively, I could open up the die because these are split dies, so by slackening off the two outer bolts in the die holder and then tightening the centre bolt, this would open the die up slightly. What I'm doing here is probably not good engineering practice, but it works. It's noticeably easier to rotate the die and the piece of 316 stainless steel is not rotating in the chuck. This is the outer end of the piston rod and this needs a longer thread cutting on it because this is the end that's going to fit into the link for the watts parallel motion. I purposely cut the piston rod blank a bit too long so I have a little bit of tolerance and leeway and I can quite easily shorten the piston rod if I find out it's too long. And now with the help of some more threading compound I cut the thread all the way to the end. Here I'm backing off the die. I didn't bother facing the end of this piece of bar, it would have been a waste of time, you'll see why very shortly. As you can see, the thread looks okay. It's time now to thread the other end that fits into the piston. And I didn't face the end of this either, I just threaded it. And now, with the help once again of some Loctite 603, where would I be without this stuff? I'm going to firmly screw the piston blank onto this piston rod. I can't just do this by hand though, I need some power assistance. To screw the piston blank firmly onto the end of the piston rod, I'm using this tool. It's a pipe wrench, and it's a Barco pipe wrench, so you know that it's good. This allows me to really screw the piston blank tightly onto the piston rod. At this stage, I'm sizing the original piston, and now I'm going to turn the piston blank until it's exactly the same thickness as the original piston. First of all, I'm cleaning the centre, the stainless steel part, and now I can turn the front face. Here comes the final fine cut, all the way along, and we have a perfectly finished piston, exactly the same size as the one that I took out of the engine. At the moment, the whole thing is only supported by a piece of 3 16 of an inch diameter stainless steel, so now I'm going to use a centre drill to drill the end of the stainless steel, so I can fit a live centre. And I've taken the piston rod out of the chuck. I've only done this for the video. The two washers need to be fitted before you screw the piston blank onto the piston rod. The reason for these washers is just to hold the piston blank away from the chuck jaws so you don't mark the chuck jaws as you turn the piston blank. Never take parts out of a three jaw chuck until they're finished. But it's not so bad with this one. It's a brand new chuck and the part is centred and held by the live centre. So all I need to do now is take a very fine cut or two along the piston blank to just make it a couple of thou under one inch in diameter. Collets are much better for these sort of jobs. For pistons and axles and things like that, always try and use collets if you have them, but most beginners don't have them. And a word of warning, do not buy the cheap collets because they're not concentric and it is self-defeating buying a set of collets that are cheap that don't run true. This is the final longitudinal cut on the piston blank and after this the piston blank is exactly the size I need it to be. But you don't have to take my word for it, here's the micrometer. Two thou under one inch. And now it's fun time, using a parting tool I'm cutting the groove for the piston ring. When you're doing a job like this, where you're exerting side pressure against the work that's only held by a 3 16 of an inch diameter piece of stainless steel, 
It's a really good idea to take your time and only take very shallow cuts. My pouting tool that I'm using here isn't wide enough to accommodate the o-ring. This isn't a problem, I just nibble away at each side of the slot until the slot becomes precisely the size that I need to take the o-ring. You do need a little bit of float, it mustn't be a tight fit. There are many tables you can download from the internet to give you the precise sizes for any given type of o-ring. But as usual, I tend to do jobs like this by feel only. Sometimes I foul up, but not often. At the end of it all, it's down to practice. The more you do it, generally speaking, the better you get at it. Like certain other things in life, I do believe. Here I'm using a digital caliper set to the dimensions of the original piston to make sure that the groove is deep enough. And yes, this groove now satisfies all the requirements. The final job on the piston is to clean it up with some wet or dry sandpaper to remove the sharp edges on the outer side and the inner side of the groove. Over now to the engine, the first thing to do is to absolutely fill the groove with oil, then fit the piston ring. Here you see the piston in the cylinder and it fits perfectly, and it's very oily. Don't forget the piston isn't a tight fit in the cylinder, there's a couple of thou clearance. Now it's time to see how much of the thread I need at the top to fit into the start of the watts parallel motion. This is how far the thread went into the fitting, so this is how much I'm going to have to take off using my one inch belt sander in the outer part of the workshop. Once I'd done that, I refitted the piston and had a look at how much of the thread was showing underneath the fitting. That looks about right. When I fit the lock nut, you can't see any thread showing, and that's the general idea. The piston goes up and down in the cylinder, and it doesn't hit the bottom of the cylinder. And I don't think it would hit the register on the top cylinder cover either. But to be on the safe side, I'm just trimming a little bit off in the lathe. Followed by cleaning up the top cylinder cover using some wet or dry sandpaper. You will notice that it's held well away from my fingers. I'm going to have to dismantle the piston again to fit the cover. I'll show that in the next episode. I'll also show the engine running. But for now I'm just pumping some more oil into the cylinder to make sure the piston is very free. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.